Well, my name is Stephen Kakfui. I'm a lifelong activist for the recognition of uh, indigenous rights and the implementation and recognition of those rights. I've been uh, active in the Dene Nation for the uh, recognition and implementation of Dene rights, the settlement of uh, regional claims. I was the head of the Dene Nation from 1983 to 87. Then I spent 16 years in the Legislative Assembly. Uh, first 12 years as a minister of various portfolios from 2000 to 2003 as a premier for Northwest Territories. I was 12 years old when I first read the, a copy of Treaty 11. Treaty 11, the written version of it, states pretty explicitly that as Dene we signed a treaty that gave up total every right that we have ever had as a people. We gave up all our land, all the resources on it, any say we have about our life, our children. We were basically under the total care of government. That's what you call extinguishment. In fact, it's still reflected in many of the regional claims that have been settled up here. When it comes to the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, Canada, from the beginning, has fought against such an instrument being even discussed and, and promoted. As far back as 1985, I was meeting with friends and associates, allies, as far away as Geneva, where people were working on a draft of what would become the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and that Canada fought against that literally every step of the way. They basically always said, we're not against it, we just have some concerns about it. They voted against it pretty well consistently. Why did it take seven years? for the government of Canada to finally adopt in legislation the UN Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. The legitimacy of the government of Canada is, in my mind, always called into question. It's not Canada's resources, it's not Canada's land, it has never been the Queen's land. And the Crown had no legitimate authority to ever claim this land. Indigenous people have suffered, they've been oppressed, they've gone to residential schools, they've died by the thousands through epidemics, poor health care, inadequate housing, poor quality drinking water, absence of any drinking water. The UN Declaration calls for all the laws of Canada that oppress and deny the rights of Indigenous people. It calls for implementation plans of Canada to say the Indian Act is oppressive and colonial. And the UN Declaration call on us as colonizers and oppressors to give dignity to the very people whose land we've taken and whose resources we've taken, to treat them as human beings, as nations. And this will set a standard I think if we are going to engage in fair practice with Canada to remove all colonial oppressive laws and policies and traditions and institutions in Canada so that the UN Declaration can be implemented in a fair, just and equitable way. It should be just Indigenous people and Canada in the room, and that all other obstacles, such as the Catholic Church, should be banished from the room. They have nothing to say about the rights of indigenous people. They have fought against the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. 
They have fought against inquiries into the abuses that have taken place in residential schools. The Catholic Church is fighting every inch of the way. And so to get anything done, you have to get them out of the room. I think the Northwest Territories has been fortunate because indigenous people have been a majority of the population for many years. So we, in fact, are a big part of the public government of the Northwest Territories. We want some of you young people to seek office, to seek a seat in the Legislative Assembly so that when we as chiefs come to a meeting and call for a meeting, one of you will appear before us as a minister of that government. One of you who understand us will sit across from us.